you know, it's three pounds lighter than the MP5 SD. It's about a hundred times more accurate, about a billion times more lethal. To me, I think it's my career and all the products is there's a thing out there, how can we make it better? And sometimes that leads you to a niche that you realize there's a capability gap that we could develop and fulfill. Wonderful firearm. Yeah, thank you. Commander boys. Kevin, I would argue that the Honey Badger is the flagship iconic Q firearm. I, I know you probably want it to be right now, you're fixed on the fix, <laughs> but unfortunately for you, no matter what, you guys are never going to shake the fact that this is your flagship gun. I mean, if that is the truth, that's a wonderful thing too. Like, we're very proud of this. You know, people ask me, what's the favorite, my favorite thing we've ever done? And to me, it's always the next thing. So, you know, I'm very proud of this. It, it's, it, we accomplished the goal um, and I say exceeded it and it continues to evolve and improve and it's still one of my favorite guns ever produced today. What is the Honey Badger? Um, it was a replacement for the MP5 SD for special operations. So the idea was AR controls have super and subsonic so they could shoot to 300 meters effectively have rifle power out of a short barrel, um, and then also have the signature reduction, sound reduction of the MP5 SD. And, you know, so we went lighter, more accurate, everything about it is better. I can buy a AR-15 lower for 35, 40 bucks. Yep. Parts kit, 35 bucks, yep. you know, 300 blackout upper, for. 250, 300 bucks maybe, and, and you know, I can get a, I'll even splurge, spend 200 bucks on a, on a fancy stock. How much does a honey badger cost? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could just build yeah. this for, for 700 bucks. Sure you can, sure you can. You know, um, so here's what's special. It looks like an AR. The only parts that are off the shelf on this gun that are AR are this pistol grip, the pins and springs. Mm -hmm. um, this gun is a pound or so lighter than anything in its competition, the gun you could build. And how do we achieve that? It's not by using an aluminum stock rail or taking weight out of the receiver. It's every component on the gun. Like this stock system, um, this is all proprietary, all just for this gun. It's very expensive. Like an AR-15 is artificially inexpensive because of volume. Mm -hmm. Like if you had, if, if all the mil spec parts that you, mil spec parts that you buy, all the things you were talking about, lowers, pins, springs, triggers, and all that, um, if they weren't produced by the millions, those guns would be $3,000. And just because this looks like this, uses the same ergonomics, it's different. The stock is proprietary. To get this operating, operating system to function, mm -hmm. okay, well that takes engineers, that takes time, that takes ammo. Um, as you see here, we have no forward assist. The upper is proprietary. Uh, the lower receiver, this mag flare. Okay, some of these things don't matter to people, mm -hmm. and that's okay. I mean, even the Radian uh, charging handle. We've stuck with Radian because as we develop things, they respond to us. So this is narrower than anyone they ever made before. The barrel nut is proprietary. The barrel is proprietary. The handguard's proprietary. The gas block, the smallest, lightest, fully adjustable gas block ever developed. And we don't pin it on the rifle or use the set screw because it's not the proper way to do it to get it to seal so the gun operates correctly. So we use the gas block jam nut, just like the Knight's Armament or Barrett does. Um, the tapered muzzle on this gun so you get the best alignment. The lightest silencer muzzle device there is and probably the most copied. Why, why are you doing all this proprietary shit here? It, you could just- It's the we, best. Like, I, we want, the idea was the lightest, most compact thing that would offer a capability that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's not to cut corners. Um, you know, even with the Geisley triggers, so we, we supply them in the gun, soon it'll be our own trigger. And we discussed like why we do our own trigger. Like this cost me, uh, oh, if I had to, to go in and analyze what this actually cost me to develop a year and a half of so much of all the engineers' times and the prototyping, you know, it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
and why? Well, okay, it needs to be safe, reliable, dependable. We need the shortest resets. You can shoot the gun fast. It just takes a lot of time. Like, it takes a lot of time and resources, engineers, and the willingness to invest in this stuff. Um, fast twist barrels. You know, that didn't, it's not a marketing scam. You know, we did it in the Honey Badger originally because the subsonic long rifle bullets were shooting 10 MOA. So we had to start spinning the bullet faster to get dispersion accuracy better. Um, okay, there's not, this is only a one in five. It's not even that fast. But 90% of the barrel companies can't produce anything faster than a one in seven. So we either have to develop technology or, or technologies or source people that can do it. You know, like the first fast twist barrels were BART line. Like BART line's the most expensive barrels you can buy, really. Um, you know, all of these things, the two-piece carrier. All right, so, yeah, so we designed the two-piece carrier, too, because um, in designing our own so we could control tolerances and have a better quality product, we took the opportunity to do a two-piece carrier. And what that gives us is the front is the same for the Honey Badger Sugar Weasel and all that, but the rear is different lengths because the Honey Badger receiver extension stock system all shorter. So we could do a shorter one, but then it also gives us the ability to add anti-bolt bounce and stuff like this, features to where if we want to do a machine gun or a 5.56 where the bolt velocity is higher and you need anti-bolt bounce characteristics, we can add them. So we can do different weight rear pieces, so steel, aluminum, whatever. And um, so we just took the opportunity since we wanted to make our own to make something that was better than what was available. So basically with the key, use a mil-spec key for most of them. You torque it on, they've got torque wrenches that are already set. And, you know, like I was saying, the issue a lot of times is that it's not peened correctly because most, most companies are doing it by hand still. So you just drop that in. And it's perfect and consistent. Is the two buttons there so nobody loses a finger? Yep. So, so even if these guys come in hung over on a Friday, they can't fuck it up. Well, uh, no. I mean, I, I don't That's know. Possible. Can you guys? I don't maybe, but it's very hard at this point. It took time to develop that. Um, you know, and it gives us an option like we were talking about earlier. We can change the size and weight of the rear piece. We can add anti-bolt mounts into this because we're not using a traditional buffer. You know, the R&D takes a lot of time for people to build something that looks like this. You know, easy. Big deal. I mean, you can pretend it's a honey badger, but it's not. What does it get me? Pragmatically, out in the field or I mean, or I, at the I, range, I think whatever. Realistically, over your $700 gun that you're going to build, what you get is probably 30% wider. You're going to get much better dispersion with super and subsonic ammo. Fast twist, you're going to get more. What does dispersion zone. mean? So people say accuracy, but what you mean is dispersion. So if we shoot a group, a 10 shot group at 100 yards, how big is that group? What type of dispersion am I getting out of a, a honey badger? Uh, you'll get close to one MOA with super, and you'll get close to two MOA with subs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, that, that, that's a pretty bold claim. The ammo is a huge part of dispersion. And then also, like point of impact shift and dispersion, when you use all tapers to align your muzzle device, if you want to shoot this with a silencer, which is what it's designed to do, when you add those shims, you're creating a tolerant stack and you're getting misalignment to some degree in your muzzle device and then your silencer. Okay, that affects your point of impact shift and the dispersion. Um, there's a lot of detail. So, I mean, this is basically, there's a lot of guns out there you could get that take it to the 10 yard line. I mean, this is the touchdown. And, mm -hmm. and some people can't justify it and they'll claim that it's bullshit. And I think a lot of the internet heroes, it's because you can't afford it. And like, that's cool. Like, I used to not have money either. Like, I get it. Um, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Um, how is this not an AR-15? And uh, that's a softball question for you to explain how the operating I mean, system differs. Well, okay, so we don't use a traditional buffer. So there is no buffer in this, so it's actually in the carrier. Um, they don't operate. If you just take the buffer out of your gun, the gun's not going to operate. I mean, even, so this is a gas impingement. So if you say an AR-15 is a stoner-based system with a bolt and gas impingement, and yeah, it's an AR, but none of the parts are interchangeable. This is a special gas tube. Like every part in this, the handguard attachment is different. The handguard is different. Like literally, it's just some of the pins and springs, even the selector. Uh, okay, we changed the selector with Radian, and it's one of those things just like the trigger. Hey, this, is, this doesn't work. It doesn't work in all mil spec guns. We'll do the tolerance stacking for you, and this has to be thinner, but we like your charging handle. But I don't mind building one, but I would rather you supply them for me. But it has to be to our specs. Same thing with the selector. When we went to 70 degree, 
you know, that if they want 45, well, here's why we can't do 45, because it's not safe in all guns, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we don't want it that wide. We need them shorter. We need this. 70 degrees is the smallest angle where you can have a safety selector and it'll be safe in all guns. And all guns that meet, all receivers that meet a mil spec print. Mm -hmm. Okay. You yeah, know, just I mean, just that clarify. tolerance stacking alone, most companies and certainly most small companies aren't able to do. What is tolerance stacking? So, okay, so you have a tolerance on every part of this lower receiver, the location of this hole, you know, the location of this hole, uh, okay, the proximity of them to one another. You know, the same thing with, um, you know, every tolerance, every machine thing on this receiver. So you have to add all those tolerances together. Like there's a plus or minus for the cut on the inside of the receiver. It can be from here to here. And it's also on the other side in its relation to this pin and its relation to the upper receiver. Then you have that tolerance. You know, when these go together, you have the lug that the, the, forward, the forward pin, the rear pin go through. Well, okay, there has to be a tolerance stack for those to line up because you can never machine a part perfectly. There's, a, there's always a tolerance, plus or minus whatever measurement. And so getting all those parts to line up to when you install the trigger and all the tolerances that are built into this, where it does the correct thing every time, where you can engage the safety reliably, where it's gonna hit the firing pin correctly. You know, all of that stuff matters. And I think a lot of the small shops, machine shops or small shops or some of even the bigger gun companies, don't do a good job with it. That's why you see a lot of inconsistency in components. Mm -hmm. Walk uh, me through the features front to back here. What am I getting? Okay, so you're getting a super compact, lightweight gun, four and a half pound gun, retractable stock. We took inches off of it by developing this, which was important for the program. Um, a 300 blackout with a seven inch barrel with a tapered muzzle, a one in five twist. So that gives you the ability, you know, and for who this was built for, um, if there's somebody a block away or 300 meters away, and they're engaging you with a PKM or an AK, yeah. and you've got an MP5 SD, which is essentially a 380 right. that shoots six to nine MOA at 100 yards. Right. You can't do anything but pray for help. Right. With this, you can engage those guys with supersonic ammo, defend yourself, and you've got a capability that you didn't have without carrying another weapon. Or you can load the subsonic mag with the silencer, and you've got the sound reduction of the MP5 SD just swapping mags. And that's why I love the 300 Blackout. Yeah. That's why it's brilliant. And 300 Blackout is, is your design. We did it. We did it at the request of SOCOM. They were working with the 300 Whisper cartridge. And the problem with 300 Whisper, um, which is what we took it from, was primarily is using 308 projectiles. And so the OJIB, the shape of the bullet, is incorrect to be able to feed reliably in this gun. Now, not to say you can't have a 300 Whisper and 308 projectiles and it feeds reliably in your gun, but go make 20, go make 100, go make 500 and have them all work reliably. And so it's again, 300 Whisper went to the 10 yard line. We took it to the, to the end zone. It is the final touches. It's the grit to do the difficult things at the end to make it work. So we designed the OJOD projectile that would take up the full magazine of an AR so you don't want your rounds in a magazine to be able to move and shift. That's mm -hmm. going to hurt your reliability and the proper shape to feed reliable in an AR. That's why you can't put 762 by 39 in an AR and it feed reliable. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have some of your guys watch this. Oh, mine works great. But yeah, 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 this yeah. USA magazine. Right. Cool. Yeah. You got one. Right. All right. Sure. Get 10 mags and 10 guns and let's see how well it works. The taper of the cartridge is designed for the AK. You can't feed it through. The, the straight receiver mag well of an AR. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted a 30 caliber projectile with the power of the AK, with the subsonic capability, so the signature reduction of the MP5 SD, with certain weight and accuracy requirements, you know, to work reliably. And they wanted the ergonomics of the M16 and the M4, because you think, especially everyone younger than us, you grow up with the AR-15, you understand the muscle memory. And, and Stoner, I, I don't even know that you can argue it, got ergonomics correct with this firearm. It's the easiest to use. So if these guys have an MP5 SD that they use once in a while, all the ergonomics, the operation of the gun is different from the mag release to mag changes to the, you know, charging the weapon to the mm -hmm. selector. And so it was a way to incorporate it into something they knew so to reduce the training and they could still be effective with it. What this is, is the most perfectly balanced bolt catch you can produce. Because when you why don't we give a shit about that? Okay, so 
for most people, you're never going to understand. You have a malfunction with your AR, oh shit, the ammo, I hit a button, something happened, the mag's not good. But what we found out through after 10 years of testing this gun and continuing to refine this gun and shooting hundreds of thousands of rounds through it, and a lot of those under high speed video, is that the traditional AR bolt catch isn't balanced. And with the traditional spring, when you're shooting, your bolt catch is doing this if you look from the inside. Mm -hmm. And it will sometimes spring up and stop your bolt when you still have uh, rounds in the magazine. Yeah. And, and a lot of times people think that that's a failure induced from something else. So in balancing this, adding this weight to the bottom, that never happens. Mm -hmm. You're losing something with every one of those, these things that you remove. And some of it, it's not important to people, and that's fine. You can go to the range with a $1,000, 300 blackout AR and have a great time. This was for a special purpose. You know, the profile of this weapon was very important. This is very specialized. So when you see it in a video game, like, that's probably more what this gun was actually designed for. They wanted this to, to not snag on anything. So, Who is they? SOCOM. So they didn't want it to snag on anything. So you see how the stock is integrated into the receiver. You know, one great thing is it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get that whole, where it's a Gucci gun. Well, maybe it's a cool color, but that's just because we don't add pigment to the anodizing because clear anodizing is a better finish. It turns out that it looks cool. Um, but also making it to where it doesn't snag, you don't have these big things hanging off. Like if a guy has to deploy a weapon from under a jacket or something, the last thing you want is something snagging, rattling, um, being heavy and awkward. So the ergonomics and all, like the subtleties to this gun that people can't understand are actually what make this gun so wonderful. And that's what's expensive to do and it's difficult to do because if, if everybody could produce it, they would. I thought we'd honestly like sell a thousand of them and never produce them again. And there's been a back order for seven years now. Mm -hmm. Where's the honey badger going? Where do you see this going in the next year, two year, 10 year? I think that the honey badger will continue to evolve, you know, whether it's the bolt catch, it's the stock, it's the selector, whatever it is, will continue to evolve. Like you'll see it with QCERT handguards pretty soon, which is an improvement. And I think, you know, if I own this company for 50 years, we'll probably still be making this gun. You know, I've devoted my life to small arms development and you know, there's been a lot of benefits and a lot of drawbacks to that. But I, I have enough experience at this point to know if I would buy it and it's a cool idea and I believe it's a capability that doesn't exist, I'm probably right.